Order. Now that after a short flight, the exotic bird has returned to its nest, I call <laughs> Mr Boris Johnson. Well, you're very kind, Mr Speaker. What this, what this bill, in fact, offers, contrary to what we've heard uh, from the benches opposite, uh, is a set of protections for two sets of working people. Those that utterly depend on public services for their everyday lives and those who work in public services and find that they are often engaged in pointless, costly strike action because of the, of the actions of a, of a minority, a politically motivated minority. It cannot be right. I agree with many parts of agree with everything in the bill as proposed. It cannot be right that it is still possible to have a strike on the basis of a ballot that took place many months or indeed years ago. It is still technically possible to have a strike without a fresh ballot upon the removal of guards from the underground, a piece of modernisation that took place in the 1990s. It is utterly wrong that public workers should be subject to intimidation on the picket line, on the picket line or elsewhere, as they are, and sometimes reduced to tears, and it is high time that code of practice was put into law. But it is clauses, it is clauses two and three it is clauses two and three that I think take us furthest and offer the greatest, the greatest hope, because the the trigger, the trigger for, if you agree me, the trigger for some kind of disruptive industrial action bad enough to wreck your day can take place on the basis of a tiny number of the workforce. To take a by no means untypical example, there was recently, there was recently a strike mooted upon the dismissal of an employee who had consistently failed to turn up. For work, a ballot was held by the Royal Maritime and Transport Union. Uh, 54 people were balloted. Of those, only 14 could be bothered to vote. Five voting for a strike, nine voting for action short of a strike. And yet, as a result of that vote, 26% of the relevant electorate, people's lives were disrupted during that day. People didn't turn up to work. The London economy suffered, and there was disruption. There was. And, uh, and uh, I will give way. I will give way. Member of the Bullingdon Club, intimidating people. <laughs> I am grateful. I am grateful to the honourable member for the extra minute. Uh, and and, I, and, I, can, and I, can, I can tell you that as, as a result of intimidatory strike action, intimidatory, intimidatory behaviour, intimidatory behaviour. Uh, we have seen strikes triggered by a tiny minority that have caused, Mr Speaker, far worse disruption that has inconvenienced and caused misery for millions. 24 only, only... The Honourable Gentleman has the floor, Mr Johnson. ...of London bus drivers decided to vote in the dispute in 2014, and yet there were two day strikes. In the 2014 strikes over ticket office closures were triggered by a ballot which attracted only 40% interest and were only 30% only 30% of the relevant workforce voted yes. And to those who say we politicians have no cause to set thresholds, let me remind you, let me remind you that in America, land of the free, uh, there are 39 states, 39 states that ban strikes by mass transit workers. There are plenty of restrictions I will give way. <laughs> I thank the honourable member. He's been his normal, generous self. Can I ask him in the two jobs that he's got how many people in Uxbridge didn't vote for him and how many people in London didn't, didn't vote for him? So help me condemn anybody else. The gentleman will be familiar. The, the, the gentleman will be familiar with the concept of the quorum. A tiny. What we are seeing is a tiny minority of workers taking decisions. Taking, taking decisions that inconvenience the lives of yeah, millions. Yeah. And, and, and he will know the huge economic cost of those decisions. He will also know, he will also know that in the European countries that have been alluded to constantly throughout this debate, uh, there are all sorts of restrictions on the right to strike, not least in, in Spain, which uh, someone uh, earlier alluded to Franco Spain. Let me tell you, they have minimum service requirements to this day in Spain and in Germany, as I say, they have a 75%, a 75% threshold, a 75% threshold, uh, and that I think he should frankly put in his pipe and smoke. Uh, Mr. 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 Speaker, 
Mr. Speaker, this is an excellent bill. I think it's very striking. Throughout this debate, throughout this, a serious, sensible bill. Throughout this debate, not a single, not a single member opposite has stood up, has stood up to condemn the strikes that are caused by a tiny minority of the workers. Not a single one of them has condemned it. That tells you all you need to know about that party opposite. They no longer speak for the working people of this country.